Reality is often not what it seems. The earth looks flat, but it's actually spherical. The sun appears to move across the sky, but it's really the earth spinning. Time is no different. Its true nature is not the steady uniform flow we think it is. Why do we remember the past but not the future? Are we moving through time or is time something that flows through us? And what does it really mean when we say that time passes? Time actually passes faster in the mountains than it does at sea level. The difference is tiny, but with precise instruments, we can measure it. Even a clock on the floor runs a little slower than one on a table. But it's not just clocks that slow down. Lower down, all processes are slower. How can the sun and earth attract each other without touching or using anything in between? The secret lies in space and time. Both the earth and sun change the space and time around them, kind of like how a body in water distorts the surrounding water. This distortion of time influences movement. The earth being massive slows down time near it. Things fall toward the earth because they are drawn to areas where time runs slower. In space, where time flows more evenly, objects do not fall, they float. Every point in space has its own time. Physics does not describe how things evolve in single universal time. It shows how things evolve in their own local times and how these different times relate to each other. In the 19th century, the world was changing fast. Telegraphs were connecting cities and trains were zipping across the landscape. But this created a new problem. How do you synchronize clocks between different cities? Train schedules were a mess if each station used its own time. Albert Einstein, working at the Swiss patent office, dealt with patents for synchronizing railway clocks. And that's when it likely hit him. Perfectly synchronizing clocks was not just difficult, it was fundamentally impossible. Electricity and magnetism are described by Maxwell equations, which use the usual time variable t. But there is something strange about them. If you are moving at a certain speed, those equations stop working, unless you replace time with a new variable t dash. Mathematician had noticed this weird quirk, but no one knew what it meant until Einstein figured it out. T is the time that passes when you are stationary like me right now. But T dash is your time, the rhythm of events when you are moving. Einstein saw it clearly. A moving object experiences less time than a stationary one. Its clock ticks slower, its plants grow slower, and even its dreams are shorter. Time literally contracts. Not only is there no universal time for a different places, but there isn't even a single time for the same place. It's a mind-bending concept and the consequences are extraordinary. Hold on tight because we are about to take off. Imagine your sister has traveled to Proxima B, a planet orbiting a star about 4 light years away. You wonder what is she doing right now on Proxima B? Light takes 4 years to travel from Proxima B to Earth. If you look at her through a telescope, you are only seeing what she was doing 4 years ago, not what she is doing now. So perhaps you can say that what your sister is doing now is what she will be doing 4 years after the moment that you see her through the telescope. But no, this does not work. 4 years after you have seen her through the telescope, in her time, she might already have returned to Earth and could be 10 terrestrial years in the future. But now cannot be in the future. Perhaps we can do this. If 10 years ago, your sister had left for Proxima B, taking with her a calendar to keep track of the passes of time. Could her now be when her calendar shows 10 years? Still no. If she returned to Earth after 10 years on her calendar, 20 years might have passed here. So when exactly is now on Proxima B? 
This reveals how the concept of now becomes meaningless when dealing with the vast distances of the universe. Dear viewer, take a moment to let this sink in. To me, this is one of the most incredible ideas in modern physics. The belief that there is a single universal now is an illusion, an idea based on our limited perspective. Time is personal, connected to space and shaped by motion and the speed of light. Clocks may tick at a different speeds in the mountains and on the ground. But is that what really matters about time? Think of a river. Water flows slower near the edge and faster in the middle. But it keeps flowing. Isn't time the same always moving from past to future? The mystery of time is in how we feel it, our heartbeat, our memories, and our hopes, our fears for the future. What is this flow we experience? We will dive deeper into these questions in the next video. Thanks for watching.